Et j'ai dit, moi, je ne parle pas à Pep. Il doit me présenter ses excuses. Parce qu'il m'a manqué le respect ouvertement plusieurs, à plusieurs reprises. Et je n'accepte pas ça. Moi, si vous ne me respectez pas, je ne vous respecte pas. C'est comme ça, la loi chez moi. Envy, disrespect, treason. What a complicated relationship. Samuel Etso and Pep Guardiola won a traditional treble together, but their success on the pitch became somewhat irrelevant at times due to the sheer animosity between the pair. So why did their relationship go from bad to worse? Why was it even flawed in the first place? Did Eto receive the apology he desperately wanted? And did Guardiola actually despise him? Well, if you're ready to find out all the answers, sit back, relax, and let us take you through one of the most interesting and soap opera-like dramas of the beautiful game. Before they got to know each other closely, everyone in Barcelona knew who Pep Guardiola and Samuel Eto were respectively. The Catalan was an out-and-out -out legend of the Blaugrana as a player, and fans had all the right reasons to have high hopes for him as a coach. The young manager was showing great potential at the helm of Barcelona's B team, and it was only a matter of time for him to take the reins where it mattered the most. As for Samuel Eto, bar a few problems he had with his coach Frank Rijkaard, and the fact that he was a talent produced by none other than Barcelona's arch-rivals Real Madrid, he was undeniably loved by the fans of the Blaugrana. The star forward from Cameroon was in top form for quite some time, and before Guardiola became his manager, he was already a Pachichi and Champions League winner with the Catalans, on top of that, a three-time African Player of the Year, winning three years on the bounce. Pep loved the game, knew the Barca way inside out, and had incredible potential. Etso was a goal-scoring machine, a leader on and off the pitch who still had a lot to give. On paper, this was a match made in heaven, right? But in reality, it was just the beginning of a disturbing relationship. The two were the equivalent of an unstoppable force, an immovable object, and their clash was going to be epic. The Catalan always had his eyes on the bigger prize, but even he wasn't expecting to reach it this early in his career. While everyone agreed that Frank Rijkaard didn't have the best body language during his media duties after his side's terrible 4-1 loss at the Santiago Bernabeu, no one could have seen what came next. 24 hours after El Clasico, on May the 8th, 2008, Juan Laporta announced that at the end of the 2008-09 season, Rijkaard would no longer be the head coach of the first team. And although this was a shocker in and of itself, the man who was about to replace him was an even bigger one. At the end of the day, Guardiola's CV as a manager only had a single line, and with all due respect, it was only at the helm of Barcelona's B team. But there he was, getting ready for the biggest opportunity of his life. That's when Guardiola's focus on Barcelona's senior squad intensified. The up-and-coming manager, alongside his trusted technical confidant Aitor Chiki Begerestein, had a clear vision about the way his Barcelona would play. The squad was full of world-class talent, especially up front, with superstars like Thierry Henry, Ronaldinho, Eto, and a talented young man called Lionel Messi, among others. However, where almost everyone saw an unmatched attacking prowess, Guardiola and Chiki saw falling stars and, more importantly, potential troublemakers. That's why, on the day of his official unveiling, Guardiola dropped a bombshell. All of the players in the first team squad last season are of a very high level. But with the technical secretary, we are forming a squad, and Deco, Ronaldinho, and Etoo are not in our minds. To his and Chiki's credit, the trio they were ready to discard had fallen below their best performances in the season prior. Not only that, but injury problems, especially for Etoo, were concerning to say at the least. A recurring meniscus injury had sidelined the striker multiple times over the last few years, and the fact that he openly clashed with Rijkaard didn't exactly help his case. Guardiola's in-your-face comments were hard to swallow. Wallet. But that wasn't the end of it. To the Cameroon international's absolute distaste, Pep quickly followed up on his initial comment and it concerned Eto more than any other star this time. We will look at the possibility of bringing in a winger, but if we don't, then that's fine. The priority is a number nine. We need one to complement Henry and Boyan Krukic. I want the three to feel like first team starters. So according to Pep and his partner in crime, the forward who was preferred to Eto was the new kid on the block, and the Frenchman who spent only one season at the club, which was not bad by any means, but utterly mediocre by his own standards. 
This was, as far as Eto'o was concerned, a clear declaration of war. But Guardiola was just preparing for his real declaration of war. He was coming for Eto'o's jersey, both literally and figuratively. Even before Guardiola's open letter to world football declaring the availability of Ronaldinho, Deco and Neto, there were rumours of potential transfers concerning all three players. While Ronaldinho was a target for Manchester City, Deco was closely being watched by Chelsea. As for Eto, his recent injury history had taken him away from the shortlist of many European giants. But he had a few lucrative offers for him on the table. One of them, believe it or not, was from none other than Uzbekistan. However, it not only failed to lure Eto away from Barcelona, but it motivated him to stay at least for one more year. And whether he did it intentionally or not, it was all because of Pep Guardiola. Et j'ai eu une très très belle offre pour aller jouer euh, six mois en Ouzbékistan où on me payait 26 millions de dollars. Et dans son bureau avec Tiki, il me dit Oh Samuel, ça, ça peut te faire du bien, vas-y. <laughs> Et je lui ai dit Celui qui va te faire gagner, c'est Eto. Mais tu viendras me demander pardon. Now, before we move on with the story, who remembers the good old days when a very good offer away from Europe meant a meager $26 million a year? Could you even imagine just how much Saudi Arabian clubs would have offered for prime Samuel Leto? Anyways, after this tense conversation in Pep's office, Eto stormed out. But instead of immediately giving a call to the Uzbeks, which in all honesty, most of us would have gladly accepted, he decided to fight back. But his opponent was a hard case to say at the least. And in a few weeks, he was going to come at him with another bombshell. This time in front of the entire Barca squad in a far more humiliating way. In the United States for their pre-season tour in the summer of 2008, the Blaugrana were in high spirits. Even Eto was optimistic about the season ahead as he had decided to prove himself once again, this time to his fairly new manager who hasn't shown anything at the top level before. But the tour didn't start the way Eto wanted it to. He probably knew that he was to stay on the bench during their first ever match with Pep on the sideline, and the Catalan's pre-game speech confirmed it. But then he went on to add insult to injury. In front of the entire squad, Pep announced a rather drastic change. Eto was to give his number 9 jersey to Henri and take his number 14 in return. Tout le monde était surpris et c'était un manque de respect total et je ne pouvais pas l'admettre parce que j'avais quand même écrit une belle histoire même si elle devait s'arrêter là au Barça j'avais beaucoup fait pour le club. The rather uneventful match came and went with Eto not even leaving the bench to warm up. A few days later however he got his chance as Barça moved from Houston to Chivas to face Mexican side Chivas de Guadalajara on August the 4th 2008. The Blaugrana faced Chivas on Soldier Field in front of 40,000 fans. As expected, Samuel Eto was once again warming the bench. The first half ended 2-0 in favour of the Catalans, but the goal scorers Xavi Hernandez and Alexander Hleb were not the only ones Eto competed with. At halftime, surprising Eto and every single journalist who was closely following Barca, Guardiola decided to send the Cameroon international in, replacing Henri, the very man who he had swapped jersey numbers with scoring four minutes into the second half and then bagging himself a second goal on the 72nd minute mark. Eto had single-handedly won the game for Barcelona. At the end of the 90 minutes, the scoreline read a dominating 5-2 victory for the Catalan outfit, but for Samuel Eto, this simple pre-season friendly win signified much more. If he was to get more game time down the line, be it as a starter or sub, it would be thanks to this very performance. Eto would gladly accept these terms. Luckily, the Cameroon international didn't have to wait long to find out if his two goals against Chivas got into the head of Pep Guardiola. Two days later at the Giant Stadium, Eto was a starter against the New York Red Bulls, this time in front of 79,000 fans. Although he didn't get to play the full 90 minutes, it didn't matter. Eto once again scored a brace in the 6-2 thrashing of the MLS side, and his performance gave Guardiola a lot to think about. No one knows how many hours the Catalan manager spent thinking about Eto and the striker's integration into his system, but not long after the game against New York, he made his decision. Then again, he didn't share it with Eto the way the striker would have wanted. Summoned from his hotel room by his teammates for a surprise, while the team was still in the US, 
Etzo thought he was going to meet Beyonce or another US-based artist he admired. The surprise turned out to be a meeting with Barcelona's spiritual leaders Xavi and Puyol, who were accompanied by none other than Pep Guardiola. The meeting ended with Pep speaking in Catalan and even though Eto didn't understand every single word of what he said, he knew that he was going to stay at least for the upcoming season. And what a season it was going to be. Whatever happened in that meeting, Pep and Eto decided to bury the hatchet for the common good. Iola wanted Eto to speak to Yaya Toure to help him iron out their differences. Because once again, according to Eto, Yaya Toure didn't want anything to do with Pep back then. And the second exchange was when Pep stopped a training session, trying to explain how a forward should move to Eto, something the Cameroonian forward didn't take a liking to. Why? C'est parce que il voulait me donner des des leçons. Comment un attaquant devait bouger, je lui ai dit, mais Pep, tu as été milieu de terrain, tu n'as pas été un grand attaquant. Moi, je marque mes buts comment Ce mouvement ne devait pas se faire comme ça. Et en plus, on était à l'entraînement, et moi, j'ai crié, j'ai fait un jeu sans ballon pour créer un espace pour Messi qui venait. Et en plus, Léo marque. Il me dit, non, 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 il fallait faire. Je lui ai dit, mais tu n'es pas normal, toi. We'll let you be the judge on who was the right in that situation. Now, we do know that their relationship was abnormal. However, that didn't stop them from achieving one of the hardest things in European football. A treble. And not just any treble, mind you, but a treble where Samuel Eto's participation was vital. In that historic season with the Blaugrana, Samuel Eto featured in 56 games, and in over 40 of those, he was the center forward. He had not only convinced Pep that he was the best pure striker that he had, but he had also done so by scoring 36 goals and providing eight assists in all competitions. His most famous and most important goal was, of course, the go-ahead goal in the Champions League final against Manchester United. What was more pleasing for Eto was what happened afterwards. In a celebratory dinner with the entire squad, Pep Guardiola, to the surprise of Samuel Eto himself, gave credit to the Cameroon international. Vraiment, il faut qu'on dise merci à Samuel parce que c'était une saison difficile pour lui, mais il a montré le grand joueur qu'il est. You know how the saying goes, all good things must come to an end. And although it wasn't all good all the time for Eto in Barcelona, the star forward made up his mind to move on. As far as he was concerned, he had shown that he was right and Pep was wrong while winning everything there is to win. So as far as timings go, it wouldn't be possible to find a better time to turn the page. Manchester City was so close to signing him, but Jose Mourinho was convinced that Eto was the missing link in his Internazionale project. And the special one made sure that Eto knew this. While the striker was on his way to Manchester to finalize a deal with the citizens, Mourinho called Eto seven times to change his mind. And lo and behold, he managed to do exactly that. Eto's exit from Barcelona gave Ibrahimovic to the Catalans. But as we all know, the Swede didn't turn out to be the striker Pep was looking for either. And they went on to have their fair share of problems with each other. Dare we say that Pep's relationship with Ibrahimovic was even worse than what he had with Eto? But that, that's another story. Anyways, it looked like the story between Eto and Pep was finally over. But no, there was one more chapter to it, and that one put things right, at least for Eto. The very same year he moved to Inter, the Cameroon international won yet another treble. Without question, the most important silverware he and his new teammates got their hands on was the Champions League trophy. For the fans of the Nerazzurri, this was a dream come true after a 45-year-long hiatus. And for Samuel Eto, well, he had another reason. On his way to his second consecutive UCL trophy, Eto had the pleasure of beating Pep Guardiola and his men in the semi-finals. According to him, Pep Guardiola still had a clear beef with him, even though he came to shake his hands after being eliminated. Because Guardiola, he m'a vu dans le tunnel. Est-ce qu'il m'a salué dans le tunnel? Il m'a pas salué dans le tunnel. Il a attendu là où il y avait tous les caméras. Once again, we'll let you be the judge if Eto is right or wrong with his assumption. As far as the Cold War between the two, though, this was the end. 
after going their separate ways and Eto having the last laugh, according to almost every single media outlet on the planet, the two footballing greats buried their war axes for good. Six years following that handshake, which was surely agonizing for Guardiola, Samuel Eto'o was speaking to Massa about Pep the manager. But this time, the Cameroon international had stated multiple times that he didn't love Pep the man, but he had nothing but respect for Pep the manager. As for Guardiola, although he took his time to reply, he did it in a classy way. Incredible player, outstanding striker, one of the best I met and have seen, Personality, character, top scorer, more pressure, better performance. I had him for one season. It begs the question, could he have had Eto for more than just one season? Well, we guess that no one but Pep himself can answer that question. And with that out of the way, we'll be wrapping up this episode. Do you think Pep was wrong from the start, or did he have a reason to believe that Eto simply wasn't the man for the job? How highly do you rate Samuel Eto as a striker? Be sure to let us know down below. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.